You can't see the ceiling, can you? The man asked his 31-year-old wife. She shook her head. She was lying in bed, looking toward the familiar shadows and shapes cast by the morning sun, but she couldn't see them. It was as if a dense white fog lay between her and those daily shifting patterns. Squinting didn't help. Opening her eyes as wide as she could didn't either. All her life she had perfect vision. She had never even seen an eye doctor. But that morning everything changed. She first noticed the trouble in her eyes six months earlier. She is a professional violinist and a teacher, and that summer took her students to Italy to experience the sacred music and art. As she gazed up at the frescoes decorating the ceiling of a favorite cathedral, a shimmering shape with jagged, irregular edges appeared out of nowhere. The points seemed to twinkle as the star-like image slowly enlarged. Inside the glittering outline, the colors were jumbled like the crystals in a kaleidoscope. It was beautiful and terrifying. She dropped her head, closed her eyes, and rubbed her aching neck. When she opened her eyes, the star burst with its glimmering edges. It was still there, distorting all that lay beyond it. It grew so large that it was almost all she could see. Then, slowly, it began to fade. After nearly a half hour, the world started to resume its familiar look and shape. There had been similar, if less severe, experiences every now and then. When she would get up quickly after sitting or lying down, she would feel an intense pressure inside her head, and when it released, everything briefly looked faded and pale before returning to normal hues. These spells la only lasted a few seconds and happened only a handful of times over the past few years. She wrote it off to fatigue or stress. After that day in Italy, those glistening starbursts appeared weekly, then daily. Stranger still, straight lines developed weird lumps and bumps when she looked at them out of the corner of her eye. Doorways, curves, and table edges seemed to waver, growing bulges and divots. When she looked at the object full on, it would obediently straighten out, but resumed its aberration once it was on the sidelines again. Days after her morning quite out, the young woman went to an optometrist, Dr. Paul Shannon. If the starbursts were worrisome to the young woman, Dr. Shannon's reaction to her exam was terrifying. She needed to see a neuro-ophthalmologist, he told her, a specialist in eyes and brains, and she needed to see one soon. One ten to one thirty. 